Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to time myself so I don't waffle on too long because it's late as well. And I guess just to run it back to where it came from initially, so it was in 2014 it would have been, and I was sat in a meeting in, uh, in Goldman Sachs, the investment bank, a massive client meeting. There's like 15 people in this room, and there's a round of introductions going on. And as the, as the introductions are coming towards me, I can just feel myself getting physically reacted to the fear. You know, I've got my throat's closing up, I'm getting sweaty palms, um, I'm getting a headache as well, I'm not really listening to anything else anyone's saying. And it's come round to me, and it's like, Connor, introduce yourself. And I'm like, <coughs> <laughs> and it started off really badly. All the people in the meeting were looking at me like, oh my God, who's this guy? Mm -hmm. And then I was due to present in that meeting. And my boss actually presented my bit for me, apparently accidentally, but I think he saw the way that my introduction had gone. <laughs> and, he de and he did it for me. And I remember as he was doing it, in that moment, I made a decision that I was never, ever going to be in a situation where I have to publicly speak or present again. And in the, f in the six years that followed that in my, in my career, I avoided every single opportunity to publicly speak and present, even to the point where I was supposed to be doing a presentation and I actually pretended that I had a leak at home so that I didn't have to go into work. I took a picture of a friend's leak that had been sent to me before. You know, like nuts things to not, to not have to overcome this fear. And then basically I was up for a job interview and as I'm walking into the interview, I was feeling quite confident. But at the back of my mind, I knew I'd always push this back, the fear of public speaking. I'd never take any action towards it. I just thought, as I get older, it will, it will improve somehow. I'm just keeping an eye on the time. And I got into that interview, and as I stood up in that moment, it's like the six years of running away finally caught up with me, and I can't remember that interview. You know, I just blacked out for the whole thing. And that interview went so, so badly, halfway through, <laughs> I had to give a, a presentation on a slide about some charity work that I do for a, a company called the Amy Winehouse Foundation. And they said, oh, Connor, why do you do that? And I went, oh, my God, I, don't, I can't talk about this. As if putting that on a slide wasn't going to bring it up. They were like, Connor, talk about this. I was like, oh, my God, what is actually happening? And uh, there's a silence in the room, right? I'm having all these thoughts. And I said, oh, um, I went for a challenging time. They're like, not good enough. Get really specific. I was like, oh. I want to help people in case they've lost someone. They were like, no, no, you need to get really specific now, otherwise we're not going to invite you back in here. I was like, oh, 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 my brother died. And they were like, oh, okay. And I really, I just stumbled it out. And what I wasn't able to tell them at that time is that at this point, eight years prior to that, I'd lost my younger brother in a car accident and then I'd actually nearly lost my own life in an alcohol and drug addiction. And coming out of that interview, it brought all of that stuff back up for me. And walking home that night and the days following that, I basically had a decision to make about whether I wanted to carry on going down this, um, going down this job route. And I had all those negative voices that came in again, like right at the start of my journey when I was going to do that presentation. And I made a decision to try and own this and actually go back into that interview. So I threw myself into speaking. I put myself in some very uncomfortable speaking situations. And I was able to work with Elliot, work in a one-on-one -on -one scenario and actually tap back into that story about what happened to me in my life and not report it as if it was like a news article, but actually get emotionally tapped back into it. And it was really, really painful. But my experience of life has been that better action leads to better thinking. So I put myself in these uncomfortable situations and great stuff comes at the end. And I went back into that interview where amidst what, one of the results of that, the guy who was interviewing me said, Connor, I came in with a bias today that I didn't want to hire you because you were so bad the first time. <laughs> and, and he was like, now you've got the job. And just to finish up in the last minute, the even better thing about that was that some of the people that I'd been practicing the work I was doing with Elliot with had seen me develop, um, they'd seen the training that I was getting, and they came in at the last minute and offered me a job that I wanted to do even more. So it just goes to show that continuously pushing myself through these situations as uncomfortable as it was, as embarrassing as it was, um, it all came good in the end, you know, with a bit of hard work. And I'll finish on this with something a friend said to me that I've actually recently found out he stole the quote from a series, so I'm feeling a bit <laughs> let down. But he said, time is a flat circle unless you're willing to do something about it. And that you'll just repeat the same old behaviour loops again and again and again. And um, I think for me, owning this, the speaking issue that I had, has been a real revelation for me in all aspects of my life. So if you felt like I felt, um, it can't get any worse, so give it a go. That's what I'd say. <laughs>